The majority of this video is just me talking without showing many different images on screen, so you may want to multitask and water your plants or clean as you listen. I wasn't planning to do a video on this topic, but I put some thoughts together that I was going to share at the beginning of my next live chat about the Delphi murders, and then I decided it deserves to be its own standalone video because of the importance of the topic. Not only to the Delphi case, but most true crime content online that veers away from the case to be more about the online sleuths who follow it than getting justice for the victims and their families. My YouTube videos about the Delphi case are about case facts and not personal attacks on other content creators, and I don't allow that in the chat box during my live chats. There is something I've been wanting to bring attention to and speak up about for a long time. But even though I have a fairly decent reputation and my Delphi videos get thousands of views, I don't consider myself an authority on the case or anyone that people should or will listen to if I make a plea for people to change their online behavior. But that has changed in the past week, and this will be the only time I speak about this. Also, I try not to curse in my videos out of respect for people who don't like that, but this video is different and has a few curses. If you don't like what I'm about to say, feel free to unsubscribe. I don't care. I think what I'm about to say is important to prevent continued, unnecessary grief of the families of Abby and Libby who have suffered emotional trauma many of us can't comprehend for the past seven years. If you have a problem with me trying to prevent that, you might be an asshole. The reason I'm finally speaking up is because of these two social media posts. As we know, seven and a half years ago, Abby Williams and Libby German were murdered, and Richard Allen is awaiting trial in mid-October for all of the evidence to finally be presented to show whether or not he was involved. A few days ago, the sister of Libby posted a photo of Libby with the caption, always smiling. Around the same time, Libby's grandmother posted, just thought I would get under some skin today with three photos of Libby. This is why I'm finally speaking up. The families have been under a gag order for one and a half years, but they felt the need to post photos of Libby smiling. The reason why seems to be because they heard the latest episodes of the Murder Sheet podcast. While listening, the sister and grandmother of this murdered child heard that someone online in a Twitter group chat with other online sleuths and attorneys assisting Richard Allen's defense team made comments like, quote, I am honestly so fucking grossed out with the virtue signaling in Delphi and borderline resenting the victim families, end quote. This woman labeled anyone posting, quote, smiling happy photos of the victims before they died, end quote, as, quote, so fucking irritating, end quote, and opined that it was simply leverage. She asked, quote, am I an asshole? That's my question, LMFAO, end quote. I'm speaking up because I don't think it's anything to laugh your fucking ass off about to say it's irritating when family members of a murdered child and strangers like me post photos of them smiling. Libby's grandmother also heard that this woman said Becky Patty has, quote, flying monkeys, end quote, who have been controlling the case, quote, literally using mafia and gang tactics to influence public perception, end quote. This woman continued, quote, everything I learn makes me suspect family fuckery more and more, not necessarily actual murder related, but there is some dark shit there, end quote. So this appears to be why Libby's grandmother and sister posted photos of Libby smiling, because they were saddened to hear that someone wrote such horrible things. The families of Abby and Libby, and I imagine most murder victims in unsolved cases, watch YouTube videos and read comments under the videos and in live chats. They see messages on Reddit, Discord, and Facebook groups about the case. And after last week's episode of The Murder Sheet, they've heard group chat comments from Twitter that added to the mental anguish they've experienced since their loved ones were murdered. It can be said that the families never would have had that recent sadness if those supposedly private messages weren't made public, and it's understandable that these group chat participants would be upset. Their messages were revealed publicly, but the messages were not faked. If you don't want people knowing you're an asshole, maybe don't act like an asshole. The murder sheet wasn't just doing this to get revenge on a variety of people who have nearly all attacked their appearances, voices, podcasts, and harassed them repeatedly. It was framed around how Richard Allen's defense team is collaborating with attorneys and these sleuths who have a history of harassing and violent threats online. 
I had a long section of this video where I reviewed screenshots of my own online interaction on Twitter and Reddit in summer 2023 with two of the women that were featured in the Murder Sheet episodes at the end of 2023 and in July 2024. You can listen to those episodes and view some of those screenshots on the Murder Sheet Facebook page, although my video would have shown my interactions with the two women that were not included in the Murder Sheet episodes. One of the women was the one who said it's irritating to see smiling photos of Libby and Abby, and after I've spent over three and a half years and thousands of hours looking into the Delphi case, this woman is the biggest troll I've seen in this case. She's like an online troll on steroids. It's truly unbelievable reading some of the things this woman has written. Some of the things I've seen haven't even been made public. I decided to delete the part of this video where I showed a Discord screenshot where that woman said she never harassed anyone and doesn't condone bullying of any kind. After which, I would have shown another Discord message by her stating that bullying prosecutor Nick McClelland is her full-time job plus a variety of her tweets harassing several Indiana law enforcement officers involved in the Delphi case and other people. This is not normal behavior. Why are some true crime fans writing these online messages and people like those messages instead of pointing out how odd it is? These messages are connected to the Delphi murders via hashtags or when people search for posts about Delphi. The family members see these messages. They get upset reading them. I'm not saying that people should not be allowed to call out police or attorney or prosecutor incompetence or inappropriate behavior, but the way some true crime fans convey their opinions is simply put, fucked up. To save those two women even more embarrassment, I've deleted the part of this video where I highlighted lengthy examples of their toxic online activities regarding the Delphi murders case, which is unfortunately a recurring problem among some other true crime fans. If I'm asking other people in this video to stop online fights and ignore online trolls who try to get in fights with you, I need to lead by example. Because if I would have shown the deleted parts of this video, they would have schemed to get revenge on me. Who knows, maybe they will be angry at this video and organize their friends to get revenge on me. Get revenge on someone trying to stop people online from causing even more heartache to the families of murdered children. I'm such a horrible person. I don't want to get too far off my main message of this video, so I will reference my interaction with these two women in general terms that can be applied to some of the online activities between other online sleuths. This video is not to identify specific people as being horrible people, or at least having exhibited horrible online behavior. It's about how some true crime fans' online activities are negatively affecting victims' families. It seems like all hell broke loose in the Delphi murders online community after Richard Allen was arrested, and it created a division of some people who are sure he's guilty, some people like me who are waiting for the trial to finally see all the evidence before coming to a conclusion, and other people who are convinced Richard Allen is innocent. Most of those people seem to have thought another suspect committed the murders and refused to believe they were wrong. And they think law enforcement, Nick McClelland, and Judge Gull are corrupt and falsely charged Richard Allen. This has caused online sleuths to attack each other simply because they have a different person of interest in a murder case. And that is what happened to me in July 2023. I'm not acting like I'm a victim or looking for any sympathy, trust me. I'm pointing out an example of how online interactions between true crime sleuths jumps from being about the case to being about hating other people and trying to get revenge on them on Twitter, former FBI agent Jennifer Coffendaffer posted a tweet insinuating she thought Ron Logan was involved in the murders and Bridge Guy. I replied with a photo of Ron Logan at the transfer station two hours before Bridge Guy was on video at 2.13, approaching Abby and Libby. In my tweet, I stated why I thought Ron was not Bridge Guy. Here comes these two women. One replied to me, eye-rolling that I'm wrong about Ron Logan. She felt the need to reply to me, Lois Gibson, the FBI, 12 plus people that personally knew him, including family, friends, exes, and acquaintances, would disagree with you. But you probably can look at photos and make a better call than them. And out of the goodness of her heart, she decided to add an emoji with an eye roll. Very soon after, her friend decided to respond to me. Remember when you were solving the Delphi murders exactly this time last year with the hamburger detectives? And you guys were so sure Kagan Klein was the killer. But now, just like them, you don't acknowledge this. 
Stay in your lane, Tom. We'll handle it. Yeah, I got an eye roll for you. So because this woman thinks Ron Logan is bridge guy and the killer, she called the murder sheet a rude nickname, then falsely stated that I ever said Kagan Klein was the killer. I made a video where I said Kagan and Ron Logan were not bridge guy. The murder sheet never said Kagan was the killer. So why would either of us acknowledge something we never said? Then she told me to stay in my lane. She and her friends will handle it. Out of kindness and not to embarrass her even further than she's embarrassed herself over the past few years, I deleted the part of this video where I suggested what lane this woman should stay in. But trust me, it was shady as fuck. And she deserved it. And she would have raged when she heard what I said and saw what I would have shown. But like I said, I'm trying to be an example. Don't feed the trolls. So after they called me by my first name, lied about what I ever said, and rudely told me to stay in my lane, I replied by referring to them by their first names, and all hell broke loose. Out of respect for them, I later deleted it when I found out that they were so triggered by being referred to by their first names, and I'm not going to show it here out of respect for them. Miss Troll on Steroids was so upset by me calling her by her first name, somebody sent me a screenshot from Discord where she said, quote, Things no one fucking needs or wants. Tom Webster doing a Delphi update. Tom Webster, that was later edited, which who gives a fuck what she had to say. What's his update consist of? And no, you don't need to condone my laziness. I can go look. Even though I hate Webster like poison. Somebody asked her, really, why? Quote, because he's wrong about everything. And once doxed me and Miss Eye Roll Emoji. Unprovoked, lol. End fucking quote. So, I'll refer to her as Eye Rolling Woman Number One replied, Huh? Oh, I see. We are trying to dox people now. How much time did you spend trying to sleuth out the identity of one person that disagree with you on Twitter? But if that's a game your friends want to play, I can play it too. Just remember who started it. K. So, like her friend, she also got facts wrong. I spent no time trying to sleuth out the identity of the woman who told me to stay in my lane. The first time I saw these two women was when they hosted a live chat and they seemed nice and the content was informative. Soon after, I referenced that video and complimented them and someone told me that they were not good people and said they are trolls on Twitter and told me what their usernames were. So I remembered that when they came after me because I said Ron Logan was the bridge guy. You know, six years after police investigated him and did not charge him. Secondly, I don't have any friends and don't play games, but it was nice of her to threaten me because I committed the horrible crime of calling someone by their first name after they called me by my first name. Which was interesting that she considered calling someone by their first name to be doxing when she is infamous for creating a post on Reddit where she incorrectly identified a major witness in the Delphi murders case which led to the wrong woman being harassed by online sleuths. This woman who complains about doxing also said on Discord, quote, They forgot I know their names and addresses and workplaces too, but I don't use it for public shaming or terroristic threats. I'll use it for mailing out the protection orders and other communications from my lawyer, end quote. If this woman feels like she has been harassed online, that also is a horrible effect of the true crime online community. How did that get to that point? Soon after the Twitter nonsense, both of these women again tried to start a fight with me on Reddit, and eye-rolling woman number one lied and said she's not even on Twitter. Okay, honey boo boo. She complained that I was trying to out her and dox her, even though she uses the same online profile name on different websites, so I didn't know it was considered doxing. The only reason her friend, Troll on Steroids, got mad that I called her by her first name is because she thought she was hiding behind a Twitter profile with a male name. I'm sorry you thought you could hide behind a profile on Twitter, spewing hateful messages to people all over Twitter. I didn't know it was supposed to be a secret that you're not really a man, and you don't have the dick you told people to suck. Maybe if people have to create a bunch of fake online profiles to say things you don't have the guts to say with your real name, you shouldn't be saying that shit. I agree that people should not be doxxed with certain personal information, 
But is the reason you don't want people to know who you really are because you want to be anonymous and hide behind multiple fake profiles so you can write rude things without your family, friends, coworkers, and strangers knowing it is you who thinks it is acceptable to think that way. If you're one of those people, maybe you shouldn't be writing those things. If you don't want people to know you're an asshole, stop acting like an asshole. After these two interactions where I had tried to talk about the case facts and these two women turned it into some personal drama and threats, I tried to ignore them as much as possible. Remember, don't feed the trolls. But I have to add a compliment to eye-rolling woman number one. She produced an excellent video on the unsolved murder of a woman. Why can't the true crime community focus on good things like that and trying to solve crimes instead of attacking other online sleuths and bad-mouthing judges, police, and prosecutors? That does nothing to help victims and their families. It is further hurting them. Understand that. Can everyone understand that? I've said many times in my live chats, these murder cases are not online sleuthing competitions to feel smart or stupid when your theory or person of interest turns out to be wrong. Some people online are so unnecessarily aggressive to anyone who has a different opinion. Talk to a mental health professional because that's not normal. Some of y'all are tripping and not in a good way. For anyone who thinks I'm being a hypocrite for asking people to stop getting in online fights in a video where I'm pointing out two people who don't like me, I only use the online messages as an example of what has been directed at me simply for saying I didn't think a person of interest was valid. If they never wrote those rude messages, I wouldn't have been able to show them as examples. This video is not to attack them. I could have posted even more embarrassing things about them, but I'm not that nasty and not interested in getting in online fights with strangers when we're only aware of each other because two children were murdered. It looks horrible. In online discussions about the Delphi case, either on message boards or YouTube, there are many messages threatening acts of violence against Judge Gull, law enforcement, and content creators simply because the author disagrees with them. True crime fans are threatening to beat each other up and kill each other. Hello, did you hear that? It's true. I thought most people interested in this case were so appalled that one human being, Bridge Guy, could walk up to two children, kidnap them, and then murder them. But then people online following the case are threatening violence to other true crime fans who they only know because two kids got murdered. How do people not comprehend how bad this looks and how it is hurting the victims' families? I'm not going to be a hypocrite and act like I've never said anything negative about people or content creators in private. But the ones I've said it about were warranted. Let's be real, like some of these people are fucking nuts. I recently thought, I've met thousands of people in my life, and I've never encountered people with personalities like some of the people I've encountered while following the Delphi murders case. And to be clear, that's not a compliment. There are plenty of other people online I could totally call out and use examples of how they have been rude to me, but I deleted that section because they're not worth it. Again, don't feed the trolls. Three pieces of advice from Tom. Number one, there are two types of people in this world. Some people always have to get the last word or last punch so they can feel more powerful and that they won an argument. It seems like some of these people have had a prior traumatic incident in their lives where they lost and they don't want to lose ever again. Then there's the other type of person like me who at the first sign of someone being a clown, I'm like, okay, bye, have a nice life, not interested. I suggest more people online respond like this when you encounter internet trolls. Don't feed the trolls. It's understandable that some creators who get attacked want to stand up for themselves and fight back, but it's a never-ending battle. Give it up. The other person is not worth it. By engaging with them, you're showing them that they're worth it. They're not. Stop using hashtag Delphi murders to settle your internet feud with someone you're only aware of because Abby and Libby got killed. Tom's tip number two. If someone's being a jerk to you, they're probably being a jerk to a bunch of other people. Ignore them and let the other people get revenge. Finally, number three, if anybody's still even listening, <laughs> you're never going to change someone's horrible personality by leaving rude comments on social media. Plenty of people have left rude comments for me, and I still have the same horrible personality. When someone leaves a rude comment, I just laugh, 
say, thank God I'm not them or someone who has to deal with them on a regular basis and keep it moving. Look at the qualities of the person attacking you. I've never been dissed by someone I admire or who I'd rather be. Next. The Delphi case has been hijacked by people with a variety of motives that have nothing to do with Abby and Libby and their families getting justice. It's turned into a circus of people trying to feel better about themselves by arguing with people who have opposing thoughts or who simply annoy them. This really needs to stop, but I would be shocked if any of the people caught up in this drama gives a flying fuck about what I'm saying and will stop the online fighting, but I felt like someone had to say it, and so that's why I'm saying it. If you're obsessed with the Delphi case or some other case, and there isn't much happening in regards to new facts, maybe start focusing on something else, non-true crime related, until there are updates in the case that you're interested in, instead of just focusing on drama. These families have been hurting for nearly eight years in a nightmare most of us luckily can't even understand. The next time you want to post some personal attack and connect it to the Delphi case, think about these women. You have no idea how hard it is to try to find a grief counselor for this specific situation. This has been a very hard year, a very hard year. This is, uh, the girls are seniors this year. And I will always speak of Libby in the present tense because to me, she's always here. Uh, we've been watching, we've been seeing on Facebook and stuff, the, their friends. And I realize we don't have senior pictures. Her things are still here. We just can't, we can't erase her from our lives and we don't want to. We pray every day that we'll have peace someday. Are you okay knowing these family members may see what you're writing and know that it's going to make them sad. I'm trying to help bring attention to this and stop some of the emotional pain these families are continuing to feel solely because what is going on online. Videos complaining about other content creators need to stop, or at least stop doing it with the hashtag Delphi. Stop watching those videos, even if you like to hate watch the creator. Stop commenting and agreeing. Comment and say they need to stop making videos that are just drama. If you don't like a content creator, stop watching them. If you don't like me, stop watching. I seriously don't care if I only get 2,000 views instead of 4,000. Too many people online have hijacked this case and turned it into so many different things that have nothing to do with getting justice for these two murdered children. If you're one of the people who have gotten caught up in these online fights, I suggest you take a step back and think how would you react if someone in your family was murdered and you went online and you saw all the things that all of us see go on in this online circus, how would that make you feel? If there's an afterlife and Abby and Libby are watching what this case has turned into online, do you not think that these two girls would be like, what the hell are these adults doing because we got murdered? As we hopefully head toward the start of the trial in three months, I hope we can all start focusing just on the case and not all this drama between all these people online. This case is not about us. It's about Abby and Libby, their families, Richard Allen getting a fair trial, his family getting answers, and the town of Delphi also getting answers. The rest of us will move on after there's a resolution to this case, but it's about the people who are going to have to live the rest of their lives dealing with the consequences of what that man on the bridge did to these two girls. Thank you.